We have yet another reason to avoid SSRI antidepressants. Drugs like Prozac and Paxil and Zoloft and Celexa, the designer drugs that many people end up being dependent on. Now, they have now been linked to an increased risk after surgery when you're taking these drugs to bleeding, to excess bleeding, so it can lead to transfusions and hospital readmissions and, and even to death. Now, the scientists looked at over 530,000 patient records, and what did they find? Yeah, this is really pretty shocking. Basically, this was an article that was published in, in the journal called Internal Medicine in April of 2013. And they, as Vicki said, studied a lot of patient records, and, in, and that was from the year 2006 to 2008. And what they found was that hospital mortality was increased 20% in these people, bleeding was increased 9%, and readmission rates were 22 percent higher so we're looking at something that's a big deal I mean these drugs we tend to use uh, almost like water somebody comes in they're depressed uh, you don't have enough money to do the psychotherapy or the work that needs to be done to get at the underlying problem the first thing our psychiatrists are doing now is they're starting these fancy antidepressants and you know we've done many other shows on antidepressants and some of the the side effects and mm -hmm. the problems and things that they can have, everything from causing breast cancer to ovarian cancer to to 73% increase of deaths in the intensive care unit and mm -hmm. a well, multitude they, of, of different things. But this one's new about the bleeding. And you know, there mm -hmm. are so many people that take aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. drugs that this is really important to know. Absolutely, and some of the side effects are, are, are problematic. I mean, that are just kind of like routine like nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. A lot of people can't sleep when they're on it. It causes insomnia in some. It can cause impotence, which is one of the big reasons why a lot of men don't like taking it. It increases your suicidal thoughts uh, and ideation. Which can is make just manic. ridiculous because it's an antidepressant. Yeah. But the reason that I, I just wanted to say that the reason that I brought up the aspirin and the non anti-inflammatory drugs is because those can increase your risk of, of bleeding. Mm -hmm. And so if you take those with an antidepressant, that can really increase your ri risk. So the SSRI antidepressants, what they really do is they interfere with your platelet function. Right. They, they stick to platelets, and then when they do, the platelets don't stick to themselves, and what you have is a, a chance for bleeding. Now, a lot of these drugs don't even do much. I mean, when you look at the biggest studies that were done that assess the effectiveness of SSRI antidepressants on depression, for mild to moderate depression, it works no better than placebo, which is hard to believe but true. For severe depression, it may have some small value. But my big beef is, is why would we use a drug like that that costs a fair amount of money to start with, that has the potential for a lot of side effects that nobody wants, and doesn't work any better than placebo. It's like, what are we thinking? Well, and then some of the side effects would be enough to cause you to be depressed. Oh, well, indeed. And if you're taking certain drugs, like, for example, you're taking a digitalis or Coumadin or some of the antiarrhythmic drugs or the tricyclic antidepressants or many other ones, it increases their toxicity because it, it competes for uh, the detoxification sites that are involved. And I don't understand why a doctor would order it for a pregnant woman because it can cause miscarriages and mm -hmm. it can cause autism. Well, maybe there's people who think that and there, there may be a slightly increased risk of it. It's far from fully established, but Vicki's got a good point here. Why do we, I mean, I can imagine being a doctor and have, and have had women who are pregnant who have depression, you sometimes you're between a rock and a hard place and you want to be able to do something, but like she said, that's not the right choice except in very rare situations. Well, especially with women that are having difficulty getting pregnant, and then you give them an antidepressant that could cause well, a miscarriage. It's just sort of a Well, weird... it sort of is a reflector of what happens in medicine today. What we tend to do is rely on drugs and surgeries and technologies rather than looking at lifestyle, non-invasive therapies, and maybe herbs and supplements before we get into the heavy-duty artillery that has uh, about 400,000 deaths every year, I'm talking about drugs now, pharmaceutical drugs, and millions of hospitalizations. 
So when we're talking about antidepressants and uh, looking at what's happening in people who are going to surgery to have an increased risk of the kinds of things we're talking about, that should be another sign that tells us to think carefully before we start prescribing these drugs unless there's a really darn good reason that doesn't have a different solution. Well, the other thing is, too, is that it can cause weight gain. And some people get depressed when they gain weight, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe that, that's why they eat too much because maybe they're depressed. So that seems like a kind of a odd thing. And it can cause a lot of the chronic diseases that we're always so concerned about, like the osteoporosis, for example, well, that's and just, strokes and, and arteriosclerosis. Exactly. It even causes carotid artery thickening. So there are a lot of reasons to be on the safe side. If you can, avoid the use of drugs. Start with lifestyle first. And if you can finish with that, you're way ahead of the game.